this is called regenerative uh, circuit the way it works is um, this uh, return line is not connected to any of the return port of the four-way directional valve instead it is connected right after the pump so whatever the pump is producing imagine that pump is producing here qp amount of flow and then this uh, return line is the flow is coming qr from that so instead of dumping to the reservoir like in the earlier cases we have seen uh, we don't dump the return flow uh, in the reservoir instead we connect right after the pump so what happened it adds the flow so the total flow uh, would be qt is we can write the qp plus q regenerative so that is the total flow for the regenerative circuit so when we set up like this so during the extension stroke um, the regenerative circuit the total flow is qp plus q uh, r so to calculate pump flow we can do solve for pump qp is equal to qt minus qr qt um, now uh, remember we are developing all these equations for extension stroke we are thinking that the cylinder is extending now so going this way going out and the velocity of extension is that so qt total flow that coming this way that's the qt qt so we can write qt is equal to uh, the area of the piston the area of the blanket like this this area times the velocity of extension ext minus then the um, the the re the regenerative flow or return flow we can calculate the um, the area of the rod end which is the area of the uh, piston minus area of the rod so that is the amount of fluid i have cross-sectional area times the velocity of extension to get the um, now if we just so this one this one cancel i will have a r times velocity of extension so that's qp now if we calculate velocity of extension that's going to be equal to qp pump flow divided by the uh, rod area now piston area is larger than the rod area so as you can see here the velocity of extension increases in the regenerative flow however the uh, the power does not increase now in a regenerative circuit because it's connected here the return line is connected right after the pump if we ignore the losses in the forward directional valve then we'll have basically same pressure on this side and also on the blank side so the blank side and also the rod side will have the same pressure if we have the same pressure both sides so so we can calculate the blank and force like this fv is equal to uh, pressure times the area of the blank end and then which is area of the piston so p times area of the piston and then the rod end force we can calculate pressure times the rod end area which is uh, area of the piston minus area of the rod so now whatever left that will be the force carrying capacity so f load the system can take the load fb minus fr so the, we increase the velocity but the force kind of decreases proportionally so if we do this calculation f load will be uh, let's uh, put all these values so p a p minus then pressure times a p minus a r so resultant i will have p a r 
so that is the load as you can see the load significantly decreased because the rod area is the area of the cross section of the rod is smaller so velocity increases force carrying capacity decreases then we know that power is equal to uh, velocity force times velocity so that is the power so if velocity increases then force decreases so power is basically kind of constant because the pump power whatever the pump is producing the hydraulic power so we can say power produced by the pump which is pq by 1714 that is kind of fixed that is the uh, power of the pump so we cannot just by increasing the velocity we cannot really get more power then the force carrying capacity decreases and vice versa so that's one of the advantages of regenerative circuit we can increase the velocity uh, and then carry smaller load or the vice versa